1984, I was in the house of a pastor from Seattle. I saw a great big man, strong, lifting the weight of the, the weightlifters. He was on the top of the class. And he was on his second try, and he stuck this thing about halfway up, and it's a big weight, and the foot slipped. All oh, came crashing down. He burst into tears. Just that frustration, there's no way else to express it. No, tears aren't especially spiritual. But, on the contrary, if the spirit's really moving in my heart, there comes a time there's no other way to express it. Whether it's joy, whether it's love, whether it's repentance, whatever it happens to be, whether it's sadness, whether it's, whether it's intense prayer, whatever it is. I mean, we heard about uh, what happened here during 1987. Could that be an illustration of, uh, related to the topic you talked today about the Holy Spirit cleansing mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, Some of these people are here, I can tell you about it. <laughs> Yeah, because we heard it was pretty rough for some people. Yeah, we heard from different sources. That we would like to know a little bit about your comments about that. Doctor Dan, they'll give you better comments than I will. Okay. Talk to the people that were in it. Okay. Talk to the couple that sitting right behind you. For <laughs> um, that was a repenting stage. Uh, what is the stage now? You feel that the Lord is leading. Oh, you never get out of repentance, my dear. Bits, I haven't found a way out yet. <laughs> if you find a way, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, uh, uh, I will go into the next time. The next revelation. As I say, there's only three basic ones until Christ came. And they couldn't handle those. Look, look you take just, just the ones we're talking about now. It's pretty hard to handle that, isn't it? For years they wrestled with this. They never came into it. So why should God get them any more when they have a problem with the first one? With the holiness of God. So repentance basically is, is when I accept the fact he is holy and I'm not. Um, we start out with a concept, whatever words we use, our concept is I have sinned. It takes a long time to get to the place where God started out, knew all the time, is, it isn't I've sinned, I am a sinner. I can't help sinning. It's going to come out. Now, when I get to that point, then I'm in a continual state of repentance. Repentance is a state, it's not an act. Not something I do. Repentance, uh, I'm always turning against myself, I'm always fighting myself, I'm always turning towards God. And that's what Paul said. Keep my body under, I fight with it. Spirit works, wrestles against the flesh. The flesh resists the spirit. It's always that. But, but the holy, that, that's because I'm conscious of the holiness of God. I, I can't live that way. There's always a battle. A long war between the house of David and the house of Saul. What do you think of the statement that says that um, we can sin, but we don't have to sin? I thought you said it's true in our life. No, we don't have to sin, but we sure do. I, I, um, it's, it's, like, it's like a person that is, in fact there's bondages, in fact there's liberations when we don't have to go that way. But take the word habit. You don't have to do this, but you, you do it. When you have a habit of something. And for instance, this man doesn't have to smoke a cigarette, goodness gracious. Not to, no one taking his hand making me do it. How many times is I'll never do it again? And it goes around the next day and does it again. It's what we call bondages. Is it possible for a person to progress spiritually to a stage where... Yes, there are deliverances. A man is delivered from cigarettes, will not have the desire for them anymore. But the great pastor Spurgeon, of course, in those days he didn't know there was anything wrong about it. 
He stopped smoking. But he desired it the day he was dead. All his life. In other words, he was never delivered. He had to keep fighting it. There's things God will deliver us from, and there's things he'll let us go on fighting with. And may I ask you a personal question. Is there any time when you can look back to a day and say, well, today I have not seen? <laughs> <laughs> I used to fight for that day when I was in my teens. Once in a while, I get through a day, of course my knowledge of sin was very small, I get through a day I hadn't sinned. I'm so happy. I say, now I'm going to go for another day. <laughs> and I always have my prayer time at night. And I'd come so happy to my prayer time because I knew now I'm going to really reach heaven because I haven't sinned. <laughs> and I go in there, dear Lord, and God wasn't there. I mean, he wasn't there. It was the deadest, driest time. I couldn't figure it out. Lord, I haven't done anything today. <laughs> so what? <laughs> and then I'd have one of those days that everything went wrong. And I just, I would delay, actually I'd really delay trying to come into prayer because I just hated it in there because I knew what I don't have to face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd just kind of sneak in, just kind of get real quiet. <laughs> Lord, you know about today. Yes, son, come, I want to see you. <laughs> And the presence of God would be there to have such a wonderful time. My son, so he says, yeah, I know, we'll wipe that out. And it took me the longest time to figure that out. Why, when I, everything was wrong, it was so wonderful, and when everything was right, it wasn't even there. So I finally figured it out. Your own righteousness is a filthy wax. I didn't need his, so he says, well, why should I go there? You don't need me. You got your own. And that's one reason why God doesn't deliver us from everything. We would lose our sense of need of God. So we let's just fight with it. The, in the last days, the elected... Excuse me. Even if it doesn't come out, it's still in. In the last days? Even the elect will be deceived. And unless... Uh, until not until the false prophets fail, we can see how do we escape from when, that. First of all, when are the last days? Well, when do they start? <clears throat> Eighteen thirty? Eighteen ninety? Because she was born. <laughs> married to you. <laughs> After you got married, huh? <laughs> well, John said, these are the last days. And that was in the first century. So now where are we? We're way past the last day. <laughs> all along, all along the church. It says the elect would be, if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. It doesn't say they would be. If it were possible. And the reason it's not possible is because he will keep them. Otherwise, we would be. I mean, no, no human intellect is in any way a match for the the powerful deception that Satan has. Even the angels were deceived. You just mentioned that most of the revival happened in the church. Is there any stage? Are there any stages that? before the revival in the church and the preparation. In the first place, <clears throat> revival means reviving, bringing back to life. How can you revive a person that never had any life? You can't revive a dead person. 